In developing countries like the Philippines, the economy very well depends on engineering. With the help of innovative structural fits, the country's economy will progress. In fact, the government provides hundreds of engineering programs to help promote development. Hundreds of engineering firms and corporations are striving to keep up with the fast-paced technological world. One such corporation is SL Development Construction Corporation, known as SLDCC, and Philset Corporation, its trading arm. But what is SLDCC and Philset Corporation? Good morning! We are here today at SLDCC or SL Development Construction Corporation. I am Robert Simon Uy, and I will be your host today. Uh, we will interview um, Clems Antonio, the HR Manager of SLDCC and we will talk about what is SLDCC, what it does and we will be talking about its management practices. So let's begin. So thank you for your time Ms. Clems that we will be able to talk about SLDCC. Mm -hmm. So if you're ready, can we please uh, begin the interview? Sure, no so, problem. So for my first question, what is SLDCC? So SL Development Construction Corporation is basically a company involved in the power industry. We are with the, we construct towers, we erect towers basically, and just the same, we construct substations within the country. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So you're telling us that when we travel, some of the towers that we see are built by SLDCC? Most, if not all, yes. That's how much we have done. We, more, we have more than 148 projects mm. now since our inception in April 1992. And just to add, we celebrated our 20th year anniversary this year. And ongoing projects would be about six within the country. Mm. So tell us about the mission and vision of SLDCC. The vision of SLDCC, as we call it, is basically very straightforward. We'd like to become the number one okay, company as far as the power industry or transmission line of work is concerned. Our mission is basically to provide number one or consistent and parallel quality service or work to our clients within the country and maybe outside or internationally in the future. We are guided by our core values or principles in such a way that we have placed certain important words of value for the SLDCC. For example, S stands for service excellence, L for leadership, D for diversity, C for collaboration, and another C, and final C, would be for the community. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the organizational structure of mm -hmm. SLDCC. Mm -hmm. um, tell us something about the organizational structure. How is SLDCC organized? Okay. Well, as you are studying business, you know that the basic symbol of business or management would be your typical triangle. So just uh, just the same for SLDCC. So uh, at the top of our triangle would be our president, followed by our vice president. Then we also have our project managers leading their own small triangles mm -hmm. for each of the projects that we have within the country. So a project manager would have some an HR personnel, finance personnel, and procurement personnel among his engineers within a particular project. In our head office, of course, then we have the HR team mm -hmm. and your own big finance team, procurement team, and contract management team. So it's basically um, organized according to the functions of definitely, each department. Definitely. Okay, so now that we've talked about organizing, uh, let's talk about the management styles, the management approaches that SLDCC uses. Okay. In theory, uh, of course, management is all about a company, a group of people attaining its objective, its goal, by use or maximizing its resources in the end product of efficiency and effectivity through other people. 
for SL's sake. Of course, we'd like to make sure that we are grounded in our functions in such a way that all our managers, leaders, okay, execute these four things or four functions. And I know you know that. We start with planning, okay, then we follow with organizing, okay, then we lead and we control. Okay, depending on the scenario, of course, we expect our leaders to be autocratic at times, maybe democratic or participative at times. Because when you talk to people, you cannot be all too controlling. Because the strength of the company, not just our company, but companies within the country and outside the country, globally speaking, the trend now is to make sure that you empower your human resource. Basically, Companies won't fail if they try to maximize and lead people correctly. But of course, don't get me wrong, there's mm -hmm. that difference always between leader, what a leader is and what a manager is. But at the end of the day, what I can advise you is you combine both. A leader is a visionary and a manager is a very tactical person. All you need to do, for our sake, of course, we must be very good in tactical management because or tactical planning because we erect towers just mm. imagine these are big towers if we make a mistake even on small things we're not talking about a casualty a personnel casualty but more importantly huge amount of money so you're telling us that uh, the management styles or approaches depends on each situation that we encounter. Yes, of course, but like always, we are guided by rules. That's the mm. reason why we have our code of conduct. But I wouldn't say that we're very bureaucratic or we're filled with rules, okay, rule how to do this and how to do that. No, because we are still guided by the culture in the Philippine setting. Nonetheless, what I can tell you is that this company, okay, loves its people. We empower our people so that they will do well. And when we say empower, that means we inspire them, we motivate them, and if needed, for example, if they don't follow us, then we persuade them. That's the reason why we have rules. And finally, we negotiate to some degree. That's the reason why we have what we call collective bargaining agreement with other companies as well. That's mm -hmm. the practice provided by law. Not really a practice, but an option, a legal option. In 10 years from now, say for example, mm -hmm. how do you see SLDCC? I see SLDCC still a very strong company after 10 years. Of course, we look forward to having more clients, mm -hmm. not just within the country, but outside the country as well. We want to make sure that we dominate okay, the power industry in such a way that we get lots of transmission line projects the erection of big and small towers, but also the construction of substation plants. So, thank you for your time. Okay. From its humble beginning, SLDCC earned the attention, trust, and confidence of big companies in the Philippines, including foreign contractors. Today, SLDCC is one of the leading contractors of National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP for transmission line and substation projects. Their clients include the National Power Corporation, National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, Meralco, Team Energy Philippines, Citra Metro Manila Tollways Corporation, Sumitomo, ABB Sai Sadelmi SPA, and their foreign tie-up in China are Xi'an Electric Engineering Company and Jujang Electric Transmission and Transformation Engineering Corporation. On the other hand, Filzit Corporation's major clients are NGCB, Transco, NPC, and EDC, formerly PNOC, for the supply of transmission line materials and equipment, communication and substation cables, steel tower, steel poles, line hardware, gate valves, aluminum sheets, and other imported electrical products. With the strategies considered, SLDCC continues to expand. In the years to come, it might just grow to be one of the leading engineering corporations in the Philippines. <laughs>